So we want to do a web show. Um, in this panel, I'm going to talk about how I started as a web show producer, the do's and don'ts, and just the basic things like that. So I'll go ahead and get going. So who am I and why should you care? These are all very important questions. I go by the alias of Gaijin Goomba online. And here we go. So what makes me qualified? Um, for my show, I talk about predominantly Japanese culture and video games, how you can learn about said culture and language and everything in video games, and I'm expanding to other countries. So a little bit about me and what makes me qualified for that. I've been in Japan for eight years. I studied abroad at uh, Kanbogakuin University for four months. Um, I worked for the May Board of Education for the JET program for two years, from 09 to 11. I'm right for in, in the JOPT. So here I do a web show. So I'm the creator, editor, and producer of Game Exchange. I do have a staff, and I'll get to them in just a moment, but the bulk of the work I do myself, and it is possible to do the bulk, if not all, of the work yourself. And that's Game Exchange, a humble little show. So what is Game Exchange? Bringing culture to gaming, that's my tagline for the show. Analyzing gaming industry and culture, how we can learn and understand it and better understand our own world through video game. The major focus is in U.S.-Japan uh, relations. I have channels on YouTube, punkfect.com, screwattack.com, and I just got picked up for Reviewtopia. Um, my partner, and um, I'll put a little bit more focus on this here in a minute, but if you've ever heard of game theory, um, my uh, partner Matt Pat does a very similar show, um, but he's more like the Mythbusters of gaming, like in New Vegas, if you did get shot in the head with a 9mm at that particular angle, like in the opening scene, would you live? And surprisingly, the answer is yes. So how popular is it? Just to let you know kind of where I sit. Uh, 1,200 subscribers. I'm almost at 50,000 views at this point on my personal YouTube channel. Over 4,000 views on the Game Theory YouTube channel, the one that I share. Um, 3,000 views on PunkEffect.com, 400 subscribers and 8,000 views on ScrewAttack.com, so about 100,000 views. So, it's small, but it's growing. So, about 2,000 subscribers all around the internet. I'm trying to skip through the boring stuff. So, who else with the show? Um, I've got quite a big cast. Um, my friend TransEnergy does all of the design. And he does my intro, DJ MJ Ryder, he's my... Uh, well, he does some guest music, and he's my sound editor. Um, Goomba XX is a, one of my Flash animators. Uh, Hutch, who is here present right now, um, he's my um, consultant when it comes to um, Japan and gaming, things that maybe I need some more clarification on, or if I need some ideas. Um, Akitara, who is right there, and she is another consultant. Um, she's going to be co-hosting with me eventually, and she's my little fiancé. And then there is Failing Failure, my chip tunist. He did my introduction, and I constantly plays music throughout my show. So, let's get on to what the actual topic is. Um, here's the bad news when trying to get into the industry. First of all, it's a very tough industry to crack. If you want to be successful, it takes so much time. Um, I'm only lucky because I've been able to talk to the right people. But this, it can take some time. Um, there are Let's Plays, Bridge series, and angry reviews everywhere. So it can get very, very stale. If you try to do something that is just about the same as someone else, it can really backfire on you, either because it's already been done before or people are just really tired of it. Um, money. It costs money to do this. Um, for me, I've gotten lucky. Um, because of my job, I'm able to get a huge discount on all the software I use, editing-wise. Um, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, some After Effects, but not too much. Um, but that stuff is costly. Uh, but there are ways around it. Um, professional quality, no matter what. It doesn't matter if it's your very first episode, and your very first episode is always going to suck when you start a new series. Um, people expect perfect production quality, no matter what your circumstances are, and it's really, really rough. Uh, let's see here, but the good news, and there's quite a bit of good news. You have some options when it comes to software. There is some freeware that is actually pretty good. Believe it or not, Windows Movie Maker actually works pretty well. 
Um, if you are a student, uh, nine times out of ten you can get large, large discounts if you're a student. Um, but there are multiple options out there. Um, sometimes the topic can be better than the quality of your video. For me, my very first episode, I talked about something really, really different. Um, talking about uh, our gaming community accusing, well, not just Japan, but other countries with their own deviant behavior where we love violence. Let's say in Japan there's a lot of dating sims, whatnot. It, it, it doesn't matter because we all have our own deviant behavior that we like to indulge in. So, the quality was terrible, sound quality was awful, but people still liked it. People are there to help you. It's so amazing how much people are, are just utterly willing to help you with your show for, at absolutely no cost. Um, that's how I was able to get to where I am with this show. And I'll get to that in a little bit. So what you need to do, an original idea. Now, original idea doesn't have to be a brand new show. It doesn't have to be uh, a brand new genre. Um, there are many, many people that are successful with the same genre, but it's the difference between topic or style. Do you want it to be a brand new type of show, or do you want to put a new spin on an already established genre? Understand what you're good at and use it. I've spent eight years studying about Japan, so this was just a no-brainer for me. Um, and I've got a lot of experience with international relations, so to do the show that I do was really a no-brainer. And everyone is good at something. Like, people have told me, Oh, I just, I'm, I'm no good at this, I can't edit, or I don't have a good topic. There is something there that everyone can do, and it doesn't have to be a gaming web show. It could be a web show involving any sort of topic, but I really do believe that people can do it, no matter who you are. Finding a community, this is number one. If you cannot find a community, you cannot expect for your show to get, take, to, to get off the ground. Uh, for me, and I'll get to a minute, I found a really good community, a very tight-knit community, and because of them, I was able to springboard off them. Networking. Uh, this goes back to when I was talking about my friend Matt Pat, who does his own show. Talk with people. Go to cons. Go to chat rooms. Go to, uh, go to forum boards. Go wherever you can to get, your word, uh, to get the word out about your show. Um, know your audience. Who are you talking to? Why is your show relevant for what you're trying to do? Uh, for me, my audience was going to be the general gaming community. Um, but for other shows, it could be a completely different demographic. For me, it's people between the ages of 13 and I believe 28. So, know your audience and cater to them. Know the trends. Know if a certain genre is getting stale, or if it's on the way out, if it's on the way in. Do some research on that. And then be patient. I'll get back to this one in a second. So, something new. I want to talk about the difference between JonTron and the Angry Video Game Nerd. They both do the same thing. They both do angry, ranty sort of videos, but JonTron has his own spin. He has his own spin on comedy, where Rolf, or the Angry Video Game Nerd, just kind of is just angry. It's just his thing. Do what? I do a lot. Like, more than me. pretty bad. It's alright. I don't know who JonTron is. I have JonTron. Um, He's, I don't want to say he's really new, because um, he's not necessarily, but if you took the Angry Video Game Nerd and gave him like a Brooklyn accent with a parrot, it's, it's, it's style. Um, so yeah, a new topic, entertaining versus educational, um, those, those are just your choices, whether you want to have a new topic or a new style. We're blowing through these really, really fast. So use what you know. Everyone knows a lot about something. What do you know? What can you provide? And again, we're not just talking about uh, a gaming show. That's just my field. If you want to talk about uh, cars, if you want to talk about hunting, if you want to talk about board games, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just takes. If, if you want to share with people the things that you love, that's the biggest drive to do this. Uh, let's see, so how can you, uh, what can, can you educate or entertain people? Um, and that's what web shows are doing. I'm noticing a, a, a larger trend towards educational, like YouTube shows, as opposed to um, comedic. And it's small, but um, I've just been watching the, the, the demographics shift. And educative, entertaining, educative shows are starting to become more and more popular. So, what are your strengths going back? What do you know? What are you good at? 
What are your weaknesses? This is also really important. Um, because some people think they're invincible, and they also think that everyone is going to love what their show is about. And that's not always the case. Again, you have to know your audience. 